Welcome to the newest segment of the Real Impact Initiative. Real Impact is a space and platform for young people to showcase their God-given talent. What is it that you have to offer to the world? It is an abbreviation that stands for Raising Extraordinary Ambassadors and Leaders, Impacting Millions Through Positive Attitude and Christ-like Thinking. Today, we are delighted to host a vibrant uh, young person that I know by the name Edmo Dube. Edmo is studying towards his psychology degree here at Midland State University. Between 2013 and 2014, he served as the junior MP from Koba constituency and, and, and as the Minister of Environment, Water and Climate. Between 2015 and 2016, Edmo served as the MSU SRC Secretary General. My name is Sibusisa Senkos Moyo and I'm your host. Edmo Dube, tell us more about yourself. Who is Edmo? Uh, thank you very much for having me on the platform. Uh, it is my singular honor, and let me say, I am delighted to be addressing young people today. Well, Edmund Dube was born on the 7th of May, 1995. Um, I was raised by a single parent. I have no memory of my biological father. And I attended my primary school at um, Takunda Primary School, a school that was five uh, minutes away from where I stayed. I went for my secondary education at Midland, uh, at Mkoba 3 High School. Then I came to Midland State University to start um, towards my BSc Honours Degree in Psychology. Uh, for the record, I am an author. I've written two books. The first one, which is Lessons of My Teen Years, and my latest book, which is Selling Like Hot Cakes, uh, is titled um, The City That Whispers. Wow. I think that is Edmo Dewey for you. Okay, it's such an honor to be joined by such an intelligent and uh, young man with uh, wisdom. Edmo, according to your own point of view as a young person, what is purpose? Well, that is a very thought-provoking question, uh, which I believe, if interrogated, uh, many young people uh, will realize their reason for existence. So, I think I've just highlighted what purpose is. In my humble opinion, Purpose is your reason for existence. What is it that you were born to do? Why are you here? The day that you were born, um, there is something that was deposited in you by God. And what is that thing? So that, in my own opinion, is, is your purpose. Wow, that's quite insightful, Edmo. Okay, I have heard people saying that life starts at 40. What's your take on that? Well... As far as uh, issues to do with purpose are concerned, I believe that question is, is, is very wrong or that analogy or philosophy, whatever you would want to call it. What I believe is life begins the day that you are born. That is what a lot of people do not figure out. The very day that you are born, you begin to breathe. You, you, you begin to cry out for food. You, you begin to cry out for the basic uh, needs that are needed by, by a human being for, for him to live well. So I believe that uh, to say life begins at 40 is very wrong and uh, it's very vague. I believe that life begins the day that you are born. Do you realize that uh, during the process of birth, the doctors, they cut the umbilical cord um, from the mother um, and the child. And the child becomes an independent being. What it then means or what it translates into is that you are now an independent being and for you to breathe, you no longer depend on your mother. For you to eat, you no longer depend on your mother. You have to do it for yourself. So I, I, I still stand to say life begins the day that you are born. Life does not begin at 40. Okay, um, Ed, Eddie, what are the reasons why some young people are failing to live a purpose-driven life according to your own understanding? Uh, as far as I've seen it uh, and... Uh, when I was growing up, one of the things that I've realized is that, uh, you know, Africa in general is not, um, it does not have an issue to do with the resources, but it is an issue to do with mentorship. Resource-wise, we've got a lot of resources, but we don't have a lot of mentorship. So young people have not been given adequate uh, mentorship as to how they can live their purpose-driven life. So at the end of the day, we've got young people just roaming around the streets. So I believe that is one of the greatest challenges or the setbacks why young people are not living their purpose-driven life. Okay, okay, that's great. 
Uh, if you have just joined us, this is the first segment of the Rural Impact Initiative, and we have Ed Moore Dube here with us. So, um, Ed Moore, growing up, obviously, you were facing some challenges. There are some hindrances that you face that, in as much as uh, living a purpose driven life is concerned. So, what are the problems that you faced and the solutions that you had? One of the greatest setbacks that I had when I was growing up um, was my background. Generally, when looking at my background, I thought that I was never born for anything more. I grew up in a two-roomed house and I lost my mother when I was doing my grade six. I, like I mentioned earlier, I have no memory of my biological father. So that alone served as a setback until I got to a point that I had an appreciation of the philosophy that says, uh, uh, the world will never blame you for being born in unfortunate circumstances, but the world will always blame you for not changing your circumstances. Having that appreciation of such a philosophy, I then started to soar like an eagle. Okay, uh, that's quite insightful, Edmund. Now as young people, we know that you don't have a reason for not living a purpose-driven life. And I believe that there are some young people that are watching this show and most of them are asking, how can we live a purpose-driven life? How can you pursue our purpose? Well, what I believe is that uh, the, uh, discovering your purpose, in as much as it seems to be something that is hard, it's very simple. Um, there are three ways that I use when I'm teaching on how you can discover your purpose and I'm going to share uh, these three ways. There are other ways, though, that have been mentioned by some researchers from around the world. But according to me, the first way of discovering your purpose uh, is looking at the things that you're passionate about. Look at those things. What is it that I'm passionate about as a young person? It will lead you uh, in a space where you discover your purpose. Uh, the second thing to look at um, are those things that you're willing to do even if you don't get paid for the rest of your life. Look at what you're willing to do every day, even if they don't give you a salary, but you're comfortable doing it. That is another way of discovering your purpose. Uh, the third and final thing of, when discovering your purpose is looking at the things that you do effortlessly. There are certain things that just come to you naturally. You don't need to put a lot of effort into doing them. Those are the three ways that I can say you can use to discover your purpose. Recently, at Motive, we published a book called The City That Whispers. Edmo, tell us more about the book. The City That Whispers is a political novel that looks into issues to do with uh, social injustice, economic, uh, economic freedom, uh, as well as freedom of speech. You know, they say it uh, that uh, you are free to say whatever you want to say, but you're not free after you've said your thoughts, you've aired your views. So those are some of the issues that I discuss uh, in, the, in the novel. And I would uh, encourage uh, every Zimbabwean uh, and everyone else who is interested in the story of Zimbabwe to read this book. Okay, uh, that's very good, Ed Moore. Speaking about um, Zimbabwe and young people, we are now living in a, an era of the new political dispensation. What is it that you have to say about the new era and the space for young people? Uh, I think um, as far as the, the sp uh, political spectrum is concerned, I think there is not much that has been done to make sure that uh, young people do participate in politics. You realize that we've got uh, young people like uh, Gift Ostalos uh, who have been uh, termed as uh, political activists, but because they are sharing their concerns as young people, they are put behind bars. We know quite a number of students from the uh, University of Zimbabwe uh, who, who were sent to Chikurubi Maximum Prison uh, on the basis that uh, they are political activists. So as far as, uh, in as much as we're still doing that, I don't think we would have been, would be giving uh, young people a space to participate in politics. Okay, okay. We have... Um many young people out there who want to buy your book so where can we find it if you want to buy if you want to call me or text you can call me on 0779-147-140 0779-147-140 my email uh, is um edidube50 at gmail.com it's edidube50 at gmail.com uh, an alternative email it's uh, edmo.dube at presidents.com edmo.dube at presidents.com I also have my Twitter handle edudube50 my Facebook account is edmo.dube uh, my Instagram account is edmo.richnice.dube Okay Ed um, thank you so much for joining us may, you please, may we please have your, your last words to young people in Zimbabwe uh, Thank you so very much for having me on the platform uh, my last few words to the young people that are out there is 
Do not wait for a miracle to happen. You are the miracle that is waiting to happen. I believe that on the inside of you is a world that is waiting to be expressed. So with that in mind, go out there, do something new, dare to be different, uh, and you will definitely show like an eagle. Uh, thank you so very much for having me on the platform. It was an honor until we meet again. Thank you so much, Edmo, for joining us. And thank you so much, viewers. If you want to be part of the Raw Impact Initiative, being part of uh, a network that, is, that has got positive impact in communities, may you please make use of our, our website, www.rawimpact.co.zw, or you can find us on WhatsApp, 0783843113. Our Twitter handle is at Real Impact, and our Facebook name is Raw Impact. Thank you so much, and see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.